Hello there, everyone, and welcome to Feng Shui Fixes for the month of July. Hi, my name is Kathleen Zemanski. I'm a business Feng Shui master, business astrologer, and the creator of the Time Blazer business management system. And the Time Blazer basically is an energetic calendar that's personalized to you to take the right action at the right time. I just finished up a YouTube live talking about this upcoming week. So I do Time Blazer Tuesdays. So if you want to find out how to up optimize your time, you're going to want to watch that video, but this one is about the feng shui of your space. So my business model really is person, space, and time, uh, just like it is in my title of business master, feng shui master, astrologer, and timing expert, and really that to me is the secret to your success. So if you haven't noticed, <laughs> things are a little disruptive this year. So we are really, uh, and I really want to plant this seed for you guys that we have been forced in a global way to shelter in place. And I, I'm not sure what they're calling this type of behavior in other parts of the world, but in the US we're calling it shelter in place and social distancing. In other words, we are never ever gonna go back to the way we were of ancient history of like four or five months ago. Those days are over. And what I know that I can help you with is to start looking at your space in a very different way. So when you tap into the positive energies of a space, your life is going to be easier. You're going to have people wanting to work with you. Your relationships are going to be better. Your health is going to be better. But when you are choosing, and it is a choice, to be in the energy field that is negative or challenging, you will have challenges. Your health will take a hit. You're going to be drained all the time. You're not going to be a happy person to be around because the subtle energies, and these are the energies that we do not see, then you are going to start tapping into things that aren't so pleasant. So I decided, because this is something that I have been doing for years, and I just kind of, because of the pandemic, I really wanted to do something that is going to help you get into a better flow. So for this month, and I know for next month as well, we are actually going to give this collateral away for free because I want you to try it out. I really want you to experience what it's like to be in a good energetic zone. So I'm gonna tell you how you're gonna be able to get some free collateral um, uh, throughout this recording today. But what we are doing is we are actually traveling around a floor space. Now, one of the first things that I want you to do is you're gonna need to have an accurate floor plan. There's gonna be links below for you to get the compass style, it's freecompassstyle.com, and you know your astrology, and you know even 30 days free of my personalized time blazer so that you can get all that I talk about all the time time. So, um, and then there's actually a fourth component, which is the spiritual side, which is called universal gateway or Chimen Dunja in Chinese, if you know that term. Anyway, so what we are going to be talking about today, like I said, is the space. So you really have to start out with an accurate floor plan. If you're not using an accurate floor plan, classical feng shui can be a little bit, um, difficult because you really have to look at a floor plan energetically, but you also have to have accuracy with it. And really all you need to do is take a compass direction, just use your phone, just pull up a digital free compass on your dial, on your on your phone and figure out what your uh, direction of your house is. With the compass dial there is, and I have a video um, kind of long time ago, but it's still accurate, um, is to go ahead and learn how to take the compass reading and you can find that on YouTube. Okay, so after you have the um, direction of your space that you are living or working at, now here's the thing that I also want you to understand. I need you to do the feng shui on the space that you have 100% control over and or agreement with either your housemates, your um, office mates, whatever the case may be, I want you to have control over what you can do. So that would mean maybe moving your desk or, um, and 
again, people say, oh, I can't move because everything's built in. You know what? These things are computers. You can move wherever you want. It's your mindset saying I can't, but actually you can do quite a bit on a tablet or a phone or a laptop just moving into di different directions. So if it is a matter of moving your your desk 15 degrees one way or the other, wouldn't it make sense to do that? Um, I actually had a client that the only thing that I did when I went to feng shui, his space was I moved his con computer screen, like literally by like four degrees and his phone started ringing. That's how powerful and empowering feng shui can be for you. So let's get some power back for you, okay? All right, so uh, let us go over to a PowerPoint presentation here. So we are in the year of the metal rat, and the, and the, the year of the metal rat has been very challenging for quite a few people, but there are some of you out there who have found a way to definitely find opportunities in this disruption, and I want you to have that same power and influence as well. Before we go any farther, though, I would love for you to, if you, especially if you're new to us, is to go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And then, of course, like, comment, and share. And ring that bell um, at the bottom of the screen so that you can get notifications for this type of energy that's happening all of the time. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to now skip to this screen. And this is talking about, again, my business model of person, space, and time. I talk extensively about what's called the cosmic trinity because this is a really important factor for you to understand that there's a lot at play when you are talking about using feng shui classical feng shui so we always take into consideration the person so the person is now you and you have four pillars that you have to work off of and the four pillars are your year month day and hour of birth and so when you plug that into my software um, and you can just go to freebusinessastrology.com again that link is below but just plug in your information and that's going to generate a chart now I want you to save that chart somewhere on your desktop or in your photo wherever you want because my my system doesn't save your information so what you want to do is you just want to um, get that chart so you can see what animals are at play and then the next step if you want you can always go on to my youtube channel find those animals for 2020 because you need to find out what the what does that play for you what are your possibilities or what are some of the potential hazards that you might encounter in 2020 because it is the year of the rat. So what we want to do is we want you to have clarity on moving forward and then those are ways that you can empower yourself. Now the next piece is the feng shui. So so we we look at this cosmic trinity in equal parts of of thirds and I think that's a little bit skewed because that's saying you have a perfect chart, you have perfect feng shui and then you know everything is la da da well life is messy as you know um, so I think that that's um, in a perfect world that's where it could be but you always have choice in the matter right if you've got negative energy happening in let's say your month of birth and the month of birth relates to your career then maybe there's other areas that you need to focus on or slow down take a step back and try to figure out what are some of the things that you need to be doing instead of like continuing to do the same old same old I'm telling you this year same old same old is gone we have a new vibration we have a new day that is here that you really need to operate in a very very different way so if you're one of those that are holding on to the past thinking that things are going to go back to normal that is done our new normal is here and what is the way that you're going to behave in this new normal all right the same is for your space the space also has these um, attributes that are going to be positive and negative no matter which um, space that you're living in but or working in but what I want you to start understanding is that every year we have certain energetics that are at play so I am going to now skip over to the uh, flying star for the year. Now this is a year chart that you're looking at right now. And just so you know, we started in the center a couple of weeks ago, or a week, 10 days ago, I don't even know, um, the center of the space. 
And again, I'm just, you know, really kind of uh, putting this information out to you. And I really do need to hear from you on whether or not, one, you like it. Two, um, are, is this something that you want to hear more of? Because this is going to take me a little bit of time to put this together for you. So if you want it, I will continue to do it. All right. So we started out at the Center Palace and we have gone all the way around and we're talking about the Northeast today. Now, in you, as you can see, in the Northeast Palace, this is where mentors are involved for 2020. This is going to completely change in a few months time. So what we want to do is we want to capitalize on this particular area. So if you need people, helpful people in your life, start hanging out in the Northeast sector because the Northeast sector is going to bring about that particular energetics. But what we're going to start looking at though, is we're going to start looking at the monthly influences because these energies change all the time. So even though I particularly don't follow, because literally this changes minute by minute, changes hour by hour, day by day, month by month, year by year. So it just, it's, it's constantly in motion. Personally, what I do is I look at the year overall, like how am I setting up my space? That's like before the year even starts, I want to know what are my best opportunities to have success. Number two, I start looking at which months actually have the most influence over me. And then where within that scope, what are the best places that I need to spend a bit of time? Because this is what I'm teaching you in this platform uh, or, or with this Flying Star methodology. We are not worried so much about um, doing feng shui activations on this level for you. So literally what you need to do is you need to put your body in an energetic field that is going to help you achieve your goals. That's exactly what feng shui is there for. What's happening in your space is happening in your life. What's happening in your space is happening in your life. So if you've got, you know, a bunch of broken stuff, if you are, if you feel like relationships are, are off, if your health is off, your space probably has a lot of indicators of what are, what is happening there. So what I want you to do is get into the best energetic field that you can. All right. So let's go back and talk a little bit about the Northeast. And this is um, the type of energy as we saw in the uh, year view that we had this one that showed up. So anytime you see a number, let's just look at the Northeast box, we've got a one and a six. The right hand number is the annual flying star. The six is actually creating the monthly. So the, the, the trick here is now looking at what does this combination of six and one, and you could even go as far as in the Northeast Palace, but we're just gonna look at the six and one. What is it indicating for us that are our potential or, or obstacles that I need to take note of? All right, so the first of all, this is a combination that um, is going to start showing a little bit of imbalance for us. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, weighing all of the um, the pluses and minuses, if you will. This is also very. Um, I, I'm going to say we're we're looking at a bit of of litigation. So it's very litigious, this, this combination. So we really do need to watch out our communication. We, de we need to watch um, out for certain things like, um, you know, how you interact with, with certain people, because this could be kind of a loose wire kind of, kind of energetics, if you will. So what it can cause is a bit of burnout. So you do have to watch out for, you know, how you're managing your energy, if you will, and try to keep a level head about everything. So you want to speak from a position of power, uh, but there's a difference of speaking from power and then just pure like arrogance. So you do have to watch 
that a bit about how you're communicating because if you come off too arrogant or you know kind of ego based people are going to know and it's and it really you're going to you're going to just knock off that equilibrium here so that's what we want we really want to do we want to start bringing some equilibrium in here so another thing that you do need to watch out for though this kind of um, this kind of energy really is um, looking at you know watching your words as well and your actions so this is something that I really want you to start thinking about as well so um, this is um, you know kind of an energy that you're under a microscope you really are like Whatever you're doing, you're under the microscope or magnifying glass, if you will. So just make sure that all of your work is definitely, you know, correct, that it's not laden with mistakes, that when you're sending out a proposal or whatever, you know, just kind of give it that second second look or third look even if you have to, to make sure that things are, you know, really tight so you really end up getting a, a good... Um, good outcome from it but do you know watch if you are interacting with people please 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 watch that inner um kind of that that interpersonal relationships and how you're communicating watch for gossip if you start seeing gossip happening just avoid it so how are you going to trigger that that's because you're spending some time in the northeast in um, in the month of July, but it's not all bad. So if you can watch how you communicate with people, this can be, you know, definitely um, something that can put you in harm's way. But if you're using the positive energy of it, so actions will, you know, actions do speak louder than words sometimes. So if you start seeing that gossip or a little bit of drama is happening, don't get involved with it. Just remove yourself from the situation. And that's how you can absolutely turn and reverse that particular um, energetics. But what we do have is that you also remember we have helpful people here. So, the, you know, if you see that something is going awry, this can absolutely help you get pointed in the right direction. So this can help bring about helpful people or you can be the helpful person to someone as well. Now, another thing that it can bring about for you is a very positive side, and it's good if you're seeking to be a leader in your field. Another way we're looking at it is, you know, our current updated term is being an influencer. So if you want to have that influencer status, I would absolutely spend a little bit of time in the northeast set sector of the area for 20, for the month of July. Now the month of July is going to go all the way through what we're really talking about is the goat month that actually goes and sprinkles into the first um, six days of August. So you actually have this energy all the way through the 6th of August, which is really cool. So if you are also um, looking to bring um, some financial intelligence to your life, if you are a little bit behind on your bookkeeping or something like that, go maybe look at your accounts in that area or study about how to be more um, financially intelligent. Go study some sort of program over there to help you, you know, elevate your intelligence. And it's good for overall intelligence, but especially financial. That's where it can really help you the most. Okay, so the next slide I want to show you is looking at the icons. So as I said, you know, you are going to be a little bit in, you know, under the under the microscope of uh, as far as your work is concerned. So just make sure you double check your work. As I said earlier, um, we've got some helpful people here that is really willing to like help you go to the next level. So if you're seeking that or wanting to help someone, the Northeast will really definitely help you. And then um, for you to start becoming more financial. Um, intelligent, this is the area that you want to 
start using. Now, if you start looking at this energetic map of just with the icons, the red ones are going to be challenging and the blue ones are going to be more positive. So what I want you to understand is that if you start looking at for especially the southeast, go back and listen to those videos and see if there's anything in there that you want to tap into. Nor the southwest also beautiful for the month of July and then the northwest. So you can and use these other areas as well but what we also want you to know is since we've got mixed energy there that you are going to have some challenges there if you choose to hang out there so you got to take take into consideration a little bit of good with the with the bad but just know what's involved in there and modify your behavior and then that's how you can um, get ahead of the game all right as i told you before we are giving away for free a uh, couple of my annual compass styles which are going to be pretty helpful for you so this one is the annual flying star and then um, what you just need to do is just understand and, you know, maybe, you know, understand from the icons of the previous slide, this one on how you can interface this energy onto this one. So you're just going to do the overall global for the year. And then you start looking at the energy um, of the flying star. Now, I'm also including in this free packet is the annual feng shui dial now here's where it gets very interesting is when you start doing a layering of information so we know that the um, the green area of the compass dials are the good areas for you to spend time in and then the red is what what I want you to avoid but sometimes there's going to be you know flying stars that are going to be more vibrant sometimes the feng shui is going to be vibrant but when it starts matching up both that they're positive then you really want to start hanging out in the area and I would give the northeast definitely a thumbs up in the month of January July excuse me um, you know the the thing that we do have in in the month of July is that your work is going to be scrutinized and you got to watch out for a little bit of um, office politics so if you can avoid that and then tap into the other two good energies you're going to have a magnificent um, outcome for that month of July and we've only got a couple of weeks left here so you really need to get onto this so here is where um, we're also looking at the northeast sector where we've got the sun and the sun um, in the ox and if you have an ox in your chart oh boy that would be really marvelous if you had an ox and you're spending time there and you are looking at um, the the monthly flying stars that's really where it's going to level up now don't worry if you don't have an ox in your chart but if you um you know, want to know a little bit more about the astrology and all of that, then just go on to my YouTube channel to find out what um, all these animals mean to you. But when you have animals and you, they show up in those green areas annually, that's just saying that part of your life is going to be better. So if it's the year birth, it's going to be about your social circles, about your networking, your marketing, how far and wide you can spread your message. Uh, if it's your month of birth, it's about your career and your character if it's about the day of birth then it is going to be about your um, partnerships and your self-development your mindset can't can't say enough about um, improving your mindset no matter where you're at it's always good to be working on uh, diffusing things that don't necessarily need to be in your uh, again your your field of influence just make sure that your mindset is matching what you're trying to do and then if it's in your hour of birth if you know it it's going to be about your legacies life purpose as well as your um, your brainstorming if you will your thoughts your aspirations where you want to go what are your goals what goals do you want to achieve that's what it's for so um, so knowing your um, hour of birth is an important Peace if you have access to that. So just know that that your astrology actually overlays the floor plan as well. Some years it's going to be better. Some years it's going to be more challenging. So in the year of the rat, we know that the um, animal of the horse is one of a, a handful of animals that are a bit challenged by the energy of the metal rat. So, um, okay. So then the last piece that 
that I wanted to uh, tell you about is that uh, we have uh, a, a, another series going on called Time Blazer Tuesdays, and I just recorded that, and that is talking about this particular calendar that's a, a personalized energetic calendar, and what I talked about was the week of uh, not, uh, it, it's actually starting, it started 13 or 12 weeks ago, 13 weeks ago, something like that. But I talk about Wednesday to the following Tuesday. So with pretty much all of my stuff, really what I uh, want you to understand is it's time sensitive. So it's not for watching later. It's for watching now. If you want to make a difference in the life of yourself, the life of your clients, the life of your family, then you need to take action now. It's not something to ponder and think about. It's, you know, let's pull up your sleeves. If you have them on, it's still kind of hot here in California. Uh, pull up your sleeves and really kind of like take the time to give yourself half a chance. And really what I want you to do is continue to do what your expert work, whatever that is. This isn't really a practitioner program. What it is is trying to help you be a better expert, try to help you be a better influencer. And you know, this is where I feel that I can give you the most help is through business astrology, through business feng shui, and through business favorable timing. So hopefully this was something helpful for you today. Please let me know what your biggest issue that you are facing right now. Just put it in the comments below. I read each and every one of those comments and I will comment back. Um, if you have a question to ask, it may um, actually behoove being a video. Um, someone asked just the other day, um, um, what was the difference between the eight palaces? And I'm not really sure. I'm still getting a clarifying question, but either way, they would both be good videos. One was about um, uh, what's the difference between like the eight mansions and Flying Star because those are two different systems. And, or what was the difference between like the the more westernized um, form school um, where you would walk into any space and you know the right hand side would be um, you know, the wealth corner and then the other is going to be relationships. So that's like, that, that means that life is just perfect or everybody would be rich and wealthy, right? So the classical really takes you personally. So no two spaces will ever be alike because no two people will be like you. I mean, there were literally millions of people born on the exact same day and time as you, but because of your ancestry, because of where you live, because of how you've set up your feng shui, you are going to have different opportunities. So that's why it's very important to understand that you are unique and everything about your space is going to be unique as well. How you can tap into this energy is all about a choice. So you have a choice each and every day to look at your space. And now, since we are sheltering in space, what an opportunity to finally figure out how to best use your space and get it set up. So like I said earlier, you feng shui the area that you have 100% control over. So if it is just a room, then you put that those compass dials over the room. If you have the whole building, then go ahead and help out and benefit all the occupants of the space. So you wanna start with you, it's kind of like, you you know, on the airlines where we ask the, uh, the, the, the customers to put, you know, the, the oxygen mask on yourself first. And then when you start having a more vibrant life, maybe other people in your, in your, um, building will want you to help them help benefit them as well but start with you first get yourself really strong and really um, in a position where you can be making decisive decisions because if there's anything i can tell you about the rat year is there's been a lot of confusion because there's just so much water and it's a very cold even though we're still in summer months it's a very very cold winter about seclusion, it's about being kind of um, hidden. So really what we wanna do is we want to start shifting from being so much in seclusion to have you offer your gifts to the world. So hope that helped and we will see you tomorrow. We're gonna to be in the East Sector, which is gonna be a little bit challenging. So for those of you who are sitting in the East or have a bedroom in the East that you're using, you may wanna tune in for tomorrow's video to see what you 
you can do to help yourself be in a better vibration, okay? All right, I'll see you for our last video for um, the month of July. So we'll see you um, and thank you for watching. Again, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe, comment, share, and ring that bell for all the notifications so you don't miss it. Take action today, okay? All right, see you soon. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.